The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As Jesus drew near to Jerusalem, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, If this day you only knew what makes for peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. For the days are coming upon you when your enemies will raise a palisade against you. They will encircle you and hem you in on all sides. They will smash you to the ground and your children within you. And they will not leave a stone upon another stone within you because you did not recognize the time of your visitation. The Gospel of the Lord. If only you knew what makes for peace. Jesus is revealing a vision a vision of what it is to be humanity without God and love of Him. It's described very specifically in the letter of Paul to the Galatians. When a people exhale the Holy Spirit from the depths of their soul, and sacrifice the mind of reason for the mind of lust and desire. St. Paul describes it this way, immorality, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, rivalry, jealousy, Fury, selfish, dissension, factions, envy. These are all things that describe the tension that seems to engulf us like a fog. And the word fog is perhaps too little because a fog doesn't have a lot of weight, but yet it surrounds us. This listing from the letter to the Galatians in chapter 5, I'll read it again. Immorality, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, rivalry, jealousy, fury, selfish, dissensions, factions, envy. This is what it is to live free or die when a people crave freedom so badly that they claim it outside of the boundaries of the Creator who made us and fashioned us for life and all its abundance. Without the Holy Spirit, the term live free or die is truly nothing that sets us free, but it holds us in bondage to a freedom that lacks no restraint, no care for life, and no care for any other except me, myself, and I, that sacred anti-trinity that lurks within. We can only be free in Jesus Christ. Jesus saw the city and he wept over it because he saw what was coming. They were about to throw Jesus out of their city, literally, take him outside of the city to a hill to crucify him. They were about to feel now quite painfully the absence of God. As we've just read, it's symptoms 
in the letter to the Galatians. Jesus would be driven out. And when he is driven out of a city, there is room for only one other. The seducer of seducers, the father of lies, the prince of evil. Within 40 years, the temple of Jerusalem would fall and the city would be sacked and destroyed. Every word that Jesus says in this gospel passage would come to pass. Because they exhaled the Spirit and they exiled God from their land, literally evicting him, Jesus would say, you did not recognize the time of your visitation. This was supposed to be a time of peace and great joy, that which was first announced at the Incarnation. Well then, welcome to our world, because this is what we live in. A country that has once claimed to be a nation under God now holds God in contempt and actually is proud to voice that. Welcome to our world that has fallen into the same trap of evil that a serpent once lured an unsuspecting couple to at the base of a tree. Believing that an infant has the capabilities of surviving without their loving father. Oh, how ignorant we have become. And yet, God does not abandon us. I quote from the words of St. Faustina in a locution she received from the Lord. He said to her, I desire to unify myself with human souls. My great delight is to unite myself with souls. Know that when I come to a human heart in holy communion, my hands are full of all kinds of graces which I want to give to the soul. But souls do not even pay attention to me. They leave me to myself and busy themselves with other things. Oh, how sad I am that souls do not recognize me. They treat me as a dead object. St. Faustina's Diary, paragraph 1385. Yet, Faustina shared God's communication to her because he also gave her a vision of great hope for humanity. And so the cross of Jesus is lived out by him, especially on Calvary, but he rose from the dead and he would return and he keeps coming after his dear lost sheep, his souls, with whom he desires to delight. He is the Lion of Judah and the Root of David who triumphed. He is the one who is worthy to receive the scrolls and break open their seals and unlock all the secrets of heaven for his faithful souls to feast on. He is the lamb who was slain, and with his blood he purchased for God those of every tribe and tongue, every people and nation, and made a kingdom of priests for God to reign on the earth. If this is the true heart desire for us, one that we will not only pine for, but strive to enter into, it will be given to us. 
Regina Jenny, let her rest.